Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. Last Sunday, the British uh, Foreign Secretary, Lord David Cameron, was asked if the UK would follow President Biden's lead on withholding weapons to Israel. He responded that when he last came under pressure to announce an arms embargo, quote, a few days later, there was a massive Iranian attack on Israel, so I don't think it would have been a wise path. He continued, if I announce today, it might help me get through this television interview, but actually it would strengthen Hamas, it would weaken Israel, I think it probably makes a hostage deal less likely, end quote. Hamas hasn't released a hostage since the end of November, and shockingly, uh, this administration, starting in December, has uh, been ratcheting up the pressure against Israel. Now, according to Arab mediators dealing with Hamas, uh, Hamas Gaza chief uh, Yahya Sinwar believes that he's already won the war, whether or not he survives it. He's indicated to mediators that time is on his side and that the longer he waits, the more international pressure builds on Israel and the more damage is done to the relationship between the United States and Israel. Secretary Blinken, please explain why a bunch of 20-somethings on liberal college campuses are right, and the administration thinks they're right by pursuing this policy, and Lord Cameron, who is the foreign minister of one of our closest allies, is wrong when he says that blocking weapons to Israel would strengthen Hamas's hand. Thank you, Senator. Uh, let me be uh, clear about two things. First, no one has, no one will do more to defend Israel than President Biden. He was there days after October 7th. We deployed significant assets to the region to make sure that we could deter any further aggression and a widening of the war against Israel. When Iran unleashed an unprecedented attack on Israel, the first attack, as you know, from Iran directly onto Israel, for the first time, the United States actively participated in Israel's defense. We brought together a coalition of countries to do the same thing. And what could have been a devastating attack by Iran was thwarted, and thwarted very effectively. Uh, in terms of what we provided to Israel, uh, again, no one has done more than Joe Biden, going back to when he was vice president, including getting the MOU uh, that led to a 10-year agreement to provide Israel with the assistance that it needs to defend itself. We have one weapon system that we have um, been holding back, pending discussions with Israel about how and where it would be used because of the concerns that we've clearly expressed over many months about the possibility of a full-on military assault on Rafah, a dense urban environment where using something like a 2,000-pound bomb uh, could have terrible consequences for the civilians. This is something that needed to be discussed. It's deeply unfortunate that that discussion leaked to the press when it was a private discussion between us and Israel. Um, it did, and when the president was asked about it, he responded uh, forthrightly. Uh, but there's no final decision, uh, and it remains subject to, a uh, to discussion. But when it comes to making sure that Israel has everything it needs to defend itself, no one has, no one will do more than President Biden. So you agree with uh, Lord Cameron's assessment, though, that you're strengthening uh, Hamas's hand by having this leak get out? No, I, uh, again, leaks are uh, an unfortunate part of the business that we're, we're all engaged in. It's really regrettable, but it happens. But it's also uh, something that's not a leak is the fact that we've been uh, both public uh, and private about the fact that we have deep concerns about a major military operation in Rafa. And by the way, we've been working closely with the Israelis on other ways to achieve what we agree needs to be the result. How which is putting, is more, pressure on, how is putting over, more pressure on Israel government. helping? How is that helping them win this conflict against what you described yourself as a terrorist organization and an enemy? Not a question of, of putting pressure on them. It's a question when, you're, when your close friend is um, going down a path that you think may be counter to its interests and potentially our, our own as well, then, of course, we have conversations with them. That's what we're supposed to do. That's the nature of the relationship. We have a better way of dealing with the ongoing problem that Hamas represents in Gaza uh, and in Rafah specifically. So what kind of pressure are you putting on Hamas? Oh, what kind of pressure are we putting on Hamas? When, when was the last time, when's the last time you called for Hamas to surrender? Uh, virtually every day. You, virtually every day? <laughs> yes, you virtually every day. I have said, Senator, that the single quickest way to end this is for Hamas to surrender, to give up its weapons, to release the hostages, to stop hiding behind civilians. I've said that from day one, and I continue to say it. And I agree with you. One of the things that's deeply regrettable is uh, not by us, but just across the board, the extent to which Hamas has you know, disappeared from the conversation, as if they have nothing to do with anything, when they could. And I think you're 100% right. 
They could, they could end this tomorrow by, yes, giving up, surrendering. We've called for that repeatedly. I wish more countries around the world were doing that. Well, I agree with you 100 percent on what you just said there, because you're absolutely right. This all ends tomorrow if Hamas surrenders, and then the civilians would be able to get the aid. There wouldn't be any war there. I mean, Hamas is using the civilians as human shields. They're, you mentioned, you told yourself about how they're hiding in hospitals and schools and stuff to fight the Israelis. Uh, Hamas is the problem here. Hamas is the one who started this on October 7th when they broke the ceasefire and committed the atrocities. Uh, they have to be rooted out. They have to be destroyed. We have to have Israel be successful. What do you think of Sinwar's words when he said that he's already won uh, by the, this delay? I mean, well, first uh, of all, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen those words. Second, um, I would take with more than a grain of salt uh, anything that uh, Mr. Sinwar says about anything. So uh, the fact of the matter is he is under uh, and Hamas is under unrelenting pressure. When you're a nihilist, uh, as Sinwar is, it's not entirely clear what effectively uh, will move you. Uh, if he believes that there is victory and death, that's a different, uh, that's a different thing. We can't, uh, uh, you know, we can't um, necessarily um, d deal with that in the same terms. Right, well, here's the deal. We need to make sure Israel is successful. Hamas started this war. Wars are horrible. This is why you don't start them. But now that it's started, Israel has to be successful. During World War II, we had to go into urban areas to be able to root out the Nazis. Israel must be allowed to be able to root out Hamas. Certainly after October 7th, Hamas said they would continue to commit these atrocities, continue to attack Israel. They cannot be allowed to survive. That's why we need to continue to support Israel. And my concern here is that when you start putting conditions on our allies on how they have to win these conflicts, such as you're also doing in Ukraine with saying, hey, you can't go after long-range Russian stuff, blah, blah, blah. When we start doing that, our allies around the world wonder if these so-called ironclad commitments are going to be ironclad in the future. We've got to support our allies to win, and when we send mixed messages, then our allies start questioning our commitment, and that leads to a more dangerous world, Mr. Secretary. So we've got to continue to support Israel. Please make sure you are doing that and stop strengthening the Hamas's hand by somehow signaling that somehow we are showing any weakness. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Or Mr.